Okay, for today's lesson, we'll be covering section 5.3, which deals with the rates of change in slope, and that is, in fact, the learning target to go ahead and find the rates of change in slope. Uh, for today's problem, the first one, it says, since the weather is starting to get cold, the residents of Upper St. Clair need to get ready to hit the slopes. For question one, it asks us to calculate the vertical change using the diagram to the right here. So the first change we're looking at is from point A to point B, and it looks like that's going from 40 to 50, so that's a change of 10 feet. And going from B to C, it looks like we're going from 50 up to 90, which is a change of 40 feet. And from C to D, it looks like an increase of 10 feet. Question two says, what is the horizontal change? Going from A to B, it looks like a change of 30 feet. Going from B to C, it also looks like a change of 30 feet. And going from C to D, once again, it looks like a change of 30 feet. For question three, they're asking us to find the ratio of the vertical change to the horizontal change. And they want us to do it for each section of the ski lift. Well, if you take a look at going from point A to B, the vertical change was 10, the horizontal change was 30. So we'll write it as a ratio, and we'll go ahead and reduce it as we always should. And that reduces down to 1 to 3. For point B to point C, the ratio was 40 to 30, which reduces down to a ratio of 4 to 3. And for point C to point D, it is a ratio of 10 to 30, which reduces down to a 1 to 3 ratio as well. Now it says which section of list is the steepest of the lift is the steepest and why? Well, that will be going from point B to point C because it has the largest ratio of 4 to 3. Moving on, we're now going to go ahead and define the rate of change as the change in the dependent variable, which are our y values, divided by the change in the independent variable, which is our x values. And keep in mind the word change means that you must subtract. Now the table below shows the cost of mailing a one ounce letter in different years. Find the rate of change in cost for each time interval during which time interval, I'm sorry, during which time interval did the cost increase at the greatest rate? Now, we're not simply looking for the greatest increase, we're looking for the greatest rate. So, there's four different time intervals already shown here, and we're going to go ahead and use the formula for rate of change. And I showed here that the year would be our independent variable, and the cost would be our dependent variable because the cost depended on which year it was. Now, using the formula above, going from 1985 to 1988, we had a change in cost of 25 over 22. I'm sorry, 25, uh, going from 22 to 25, and that was going from 1988 back to 1985. So it turns out we have a three over three rate which simplifies down to one cent per year. Now, if you notice, I went ahead and skipped ahead showing all the work here for each of the different time intervals. From 85 to 88, it was a change of one cent per year. 88 to 90 was zero cents per year. In other words, there was no change. 90 to 91 was a change of four cents per year. And 91 to 2004, was a change of 8 thirteenths cent per year, which is a little bit less than one cent per year. So the question asked during which time interval did it show the greatest rate of change? And that would end up being from 1990 to 1991, because that's when the rate of change was at four cents per year. Moving on. For the next question, it says for the data given below in the table, find the rate of change from year three to year seven. So we're looking at that time frame. All right, actually, I mistakenly skipped ahead. Um, so I'm going to backtrack here to the, the flip chart that we should have done before the, the last problem I just started on. This problem takes the same data from the, the cost of uh, mailing a letter. And it has it listed up the top, but it asks us to graph that data from example one. And the independent variable as shown here is the x coordinate, which represents your year. And the dependent variable is your y coordinate, which represents your cost. And the title, once again, it's the cost of mailing a one ounce letter. 
So I've already plotted the points and shown the graph here. And you take a look, and you can see simply by looking at it, this area right here is where the greatest rate of change is being shown. In other words, it's the steepest line indicating that greatest rate of change. Now, for the next question, which I started a couple seconds ago, if you look, they ask us to calculate the rate of change from uh, year three, I'm sorry, hours of study from three to seven, and then it says to write the rate of change as a sentence. So for starters, we had to go ahead and define what the rate of change was. And in this case, it would be the change in the test score divided by the change in the hours spent studying. And the reason is because the test score is our dependent variable and the hours spent studying is our independent variable. So when we go to calculate this, we have to do the change in the test score, which would be going from 90 to 80. And we have to divide that by the time spent studying, which is 7 hours to 3 hours. So that breaks down to a 10 out of 4 ratio, or 10 over 4, which is 5 over 2 for our final reduced ratio. And that 5 is representing the percent, and the 2 is representing the number of hours. So our final answer for this particular question then for the rate of change, it is simply a 5 to 2 ratio for the rate of change. And going ahead and putting that into a sentence form would look something like this. For every two hours spent, <coughs> excuse me, spent studying, your test scores increase 5%. And that's what the rate of change shows in that data type. Moving on, we have a handful of graphs here. It simply says to look at the graphs below. And keep in mind, you do have to read from right, I'm sorry, from left to right. So going from left to right, we want to indicate whether it's running up, which is positive, falling down, which is negative, not going anywhere, which is zero, or not possible, which would be undefined. Now, this first one shows a downward slope going from left to right. So that would indicate that you're falling down, which would be negative. The next one indicates an upward slope going from left to right. So as far as describing that, that would be running up, which is a positive slope. The next one essentially shows a horizontal line. So there's no vertical change going on there at all. You're not going anywhere. The slope is simply zero. And then finally, if you can see this vertical line shown right here, when we go to describe that, we simply say it's not possible as you go from left to right. There really isn't any change. In math, we call that as being undefined. All right, now, still talking about rate of change and slope. All graphs, such as the above graphs on that previous slide, have something in common. Or, I'm sorry, something called a slope. It describes the steepness of a line. Like I talked about on that previous example, when we were talking about the cost of mailing a letter, we're looking at the steepness of a line. And you do always have to read the graphs from left to right. Excuse me. What's that? From left to right. Now, to find the slope of a line on a graph, we count the number of units on the x-axis first. And when we do that, when we're going to the right, that's a positive change. Going to the left is a negative change. And we refer to that as the run because we're running side to side as we calculate the change in the x value. We also have to find the slope of the line on a graph. We count the number of units on the y-axis. And here, if we're counting upwards or going upwards, that's a positive change. If we're going downward, that's a negative change. And we refer to that as the rise because we're rising up or down when we're looking at the change in the Keeping that in mind, we're going to go ahead and take a look at what our slope formula indicates. For number one, it says choosing a starting point on the line, count to a second point on the line. So you're going from one point to the other, and I'm going to put a huge star next to this formula because we're going to use it pretty much the rest of the year and all through your high school years and beyond. To find a slope from a graph, you need to count. Now, Mrs. Gibson has a funny little song and dance she does to that, so if you're interested, you can always go see her. I have an awful voice and can't dance, so I'm not going to do that for you. But getting back to the formula, we use the letter M to represent slope, and the formula itself is simply referred to as rise over run, or a little more mathematically, we call it the change in the Y over the change in the X. In other words, the change in the dependent variable over the change in the independent variable, which is the formula we use for rate of change. Now, again, it says to choose a starting point on the line, Count to a second point on the line. So first, 
you want to go ahead and go up and then over so many units. And then you want to go ahead and go, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. You want to either go up and then over so many units, or you want to go down and then over so many units. So in this particular example, it looks like we're going to go up two units because I'm starting at one point. And again, I'm working from left to right. So I went up positive two. And then I go over, it looks like positive three. So that would give me a slope of positive two over positive three. Now, sometimes students get confused and say, well, you know, how, how do you know which point to start at? Or does it matter if I start at the other point? So let's say I did start here. Okay. My vertical change or my rise or my change in Y, however you want to say that, I would be going down two units. And then for my horizontal change or my run, I would be going back three units. Now, when I went to go ahead and state that, I'd write it as a negative 2 over negative 3. But as we know, a negative divided by a negative gives you a positive. And you'll see that we end up with the exact same final answer regardless. However, I will say that this first answer, that's the way we'd like to see you do it more than anything. To be consistent, we'd like you to go from left to right. Now, to give you some more examples here to take a look at, I'm actually going to jump ahead to numbers 3 and 4 because number 2 is kind of a little bit of an oddball situation. So with number three, again, I'm calculating my slope. That means I'm going to go from left to right from one point to another. And it looks like I'm going, let's see, from there. I'm sorry, I went a little bit too far. Sorry about that. It looks like I went down two units. In other words, I went from four to two. And then I'm going from positive two on the x-axis over to positive six. That's a change of positive four. So when I go to state my slope, it's a negative 2 over a positive 4. Because again, we do the change in y over the change in x. But like we always do, we want to go ahead and reduce that for a final answer of negative 1 over 2. For the next problem, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to start at the point to the left and go to the point to the right. It looks like I'm going to be going down, what is that, 3 units. Going from positive 3 down to 0. And then I'm going to be going over from positive 6 to positive 12. Now you have to be careful here because it's kind of hard to see what the units are, but I'm simply subtracting anyways. So a difference of 12 and 6 is simply 6. And again, it was to the right, so that's a positive um, value. Now when I go to state this, again, it's the change in y over the change in x. And once again, I need to go ahead and reduce it. And then finally wrapping things up, this example over here to the far left, um, again, it's a little bit of an eyeball situation. If you take a look, the change in y, in other words, our rise, we're going from negative 2 all the way up to positive 2. So that's a positive 4. However, when we go to change, or calculate our change in x, our horizontal change, there is no change. And as we've learned this year in math, you can't divide by 0, and we refer to that as being undefined. Now, that's just about it for the lesson. What I have here is just simply six more examples. What I suggest you doing is maybe covering up the answers, looking at my graph, looking at the work, trying to do the, come up with the answer on your own, and then you can check the answer for each of these. Here are the first two, and two more for you to look at, and two more for you to look at. Maybe pause and try them on your own, and go back and double check things and verify that you do, in fact, get the same answer. Well, that's it for rate of change and slope. I wish you luck on the homework. Take care.